team news wise are you a little short on, on numbers today just give us an update on who's here who's not available it's pretty much the same as, as what we were at the weekend apart from um, Mamadou Sacco's not here he's uh, picked up a slight strain which may have him out for a few weeks um, so apart from that the squad is pretty much the same Daniel Sturridge isn't quite available and, and obviously the others that have been out are, are still out so um, it doesn't need to be short we're, we're working with what we've got we, we always felt that after this next international break we should have everyone back and the group will be back to its sort of full strength again but, uh, but up until that point we, we've got some young players that have travelled with us as well so uh, it's all a good experience for them the PR friendly answer is to probably say that you just take it a game at a time but do you ever, ever allow yourself to, to dream about what it would be like to win this competition? No. Really? No, yeah, really, yeah. You never, never once thought, can you imagine if I won the Champions League? No. No. Why? You must enter every competition <laughs> wanting to win it. No, it, listen, it's a, it's a wonderful tournament and we've all watched over the years and and, and none more so than the, the Liverpool and Istanbul, which was an incredible evening. So, um, listen, for us, we domestically had a big job to do in the last couple of years, and we'll continue to focus on that. And obviously, our, our work in the last couple of years has brought us back into, uh, into the Champions League, uh, which is, as I said, which is the, the tournament for the leading clubs in, in European football. We're glad to be in it. We've got off to a good start in the group stage. And... Uh, as I said, we, we go into a game tomorrow night, which will be a very tough game. So, uh, so no, the, the focus is very much for us on the next game. And, and certainly as a coach, I can never get too carried away. And It's nice to dream, but I very much need to focus on the next game. And obviously managers have, have changed here. Playing personnel has changed here as well. But there is that constant thing that they can create an upset. Have you watched back any of those previous encounters with English teams to try and put your finger on what it was that... that your contemporaries in the Premier League found difficult over the last few years? No, listen, it's, it's a, a football club that I believe is what won eight out of the last 11 titles here. So they're very much a, a team that is the, the force of Swiss football. You know, you look at the young players that always come through the systems here in Switzerland, they're very much technically gifted and have done well over many years at youth level. So it's a country that produces very, very good players. Um, as I said, and, and this is a club that uh, they're used to win it. So in their domestic league, they're a big team. They play like a big team. They play good football. They're used to money, winning games. But when they come into this tournament, they have that confidence and that um, freedom then still to go and play. I watched them last year, and they were very unfortunate. You know, I went to a game in Germany, and they were very unfortunate not to then qualify through uh, into the next stages. But they got some excellent players, and obviously Paolo was a manager who I don't know very well, but I know through his stint in England and, and obviously when he managed at Swansea when I came in after him so um, as I said he's, he's an excellent manager and they've got some very very talented players and the games I think last season probably showcased the, the Chelsea game home and away when they won so we know it's going to be a tough game good try play 3-5-1-1 change to 4-2-3-1 at times so as I said the, the, the system will change and uh, they get good players. FC Liverpool's um, start to the season wasn't necessarily that good. You've lost a few games. Maybe you, as the manager, can um, explain to us kind of what happened there. Yeah, well, we, of course we haven't made as as good a start as we would have wanted. But um, there's a number of of items as to why we, you know, we, we've integrated a lot of new players, young players that adapt into a new country and a new culture and a new pressure playing for, for such a big club. And of course, we've we've had injuries to, to very important players, players that have been core to our development over the last 18 months. So uh, so for us, we, we understand, I think, what is good about Liverpool is that we have the big vision, we have the, the, the idea of, of where we are going. And obviously at this moment in time, or certainly at the start of the season, it's been, it has been a, a difficult start. But... Um, but our performance at the weekend was a little bit more like how we've played and the intensity is starting to return in our game. And that's because relationships with players are starting to, to become better on the training field and, and starting to, to settle in. So uh, so like in my times at Liverpool, 
think as the, the season goes on, the team becomes better and better, and, and I'm sure that will be the case this season as well. Liverpool was interested in Basel's player uh, Salah, and are you like unhappy today that he's not in your team, or you think Liverpool would have been the better address for him than not playing now in Chelsea? Well, he was a talented player, um, but decided to go to another another club. So um, there's nothing really much more for me to say on it. He's done very well here, a young player. He made his choice to go to to Chelsea, and and at the time I, I wished him good luck. You have your own uh, memories from Swiss football, playing against young boys in Bern. For Swiss football, 12 years ago, these two draws between uh, Liverpool and Basel, they were legendary nights for Swiss football. Do you have memories of, of these games, or were they present now in, in the preparation of that game? No, there's nothing present in terms of the, the preparation. Um, but I know I, I spoke to Steven Gerrard on it a number of weeks back, not in preparation for this game, but... I know that he had an experience that night that really helped him in his career going forward. So, and of course, the, the result was a great result for um, for Basel at the time. Um, I think our game in the Europa League was a fantastic game. It was for me. It was good not just because we won. We we integrated a number of our younger players, and for us, that's a part of the the education of our, our young talents playing in pressure situations and and playing in, in European football and for that we came through it very very well but it was a tough game and, and like the home game was was a tough game also so so we expect a very difficult game uh, tomorrow night the crowd is always enthusiastic create a good atmosphere the pitch will be nice and this is it but we're, we're really looking forward to it and uh, and we know that Basel will be a, a big opponent for us in this in this group you said Mamadou Saka was injured. Can you tell me when he got injured and what was your reaction to him walking out at Anfield at the weekend? Reaction, of course, it, it's not something that we expect from from many of our players. And but we've we spoke and he, he, he knows fully the the situation. He's apologised and, and we move on from it. Um, and his his injury has come in a training session. So um, it's unfortunate, really. He's just felt. Uh, pain in, uh, in his thighs obviously when he's had the scan on it and it shows that uh, he's got a sort of slight tear in there which will be probably two to three weeks maybe Does Saka's reaction on Saturday suggest that maybe all is not happy within the camp if, if he's, he's doing that when say other squad members would hang around and watch the game? No, not at all this is a, I think any of the players will tell you it's, it's a group that's very much basic success over a couple of years on on our team and the behaviours within the team. And of course, you know, we can understand if a player is not happy. And, um, but it's very important that what we've achieved is down to the team. So I think it's anything but that. I think it's uh, a team that is, is obviously working hard to consistently win games. And I think we're seeing this sort of early stages of, of all the players integrating uh, and coming together. So, but it will take a wee bit of time. But the it's never something that affects the, the team. The team is very happy in terms of the relations with each other and with everyone. And, and we just aim to continue just simply to work harder and, and get any positive results. Basel is kind of considered as an outsider in this group and you've already played against Ludo Goretz. How would you evaluate the two teams in this group? Probably tell you after I play them. I think it's one. Ludo Goretz was obviously a team that um, probably a lot of people maybe wouldn't have heard of. But I think they, they showed in, in the game against ourselves that they were a good side, a very technical side, fast on the counter attack, and, um, and and had some really good players. And Bal again will be will similarly tough in, in a different way. But uh, but you arrive in this competition, it's because you're a good team, and uh, I think as I said, we all are fighting for the places. Everyone wants to get through into the the, the knockout stages, and that's something that. Uh, all the teams in the group will be hoping to achieve.